So greetings to all of you. We'll be doing inter-VLAN routing today. So why inter-VLAN routing? Because VLAN 10 so far could communicate with only VLAN 10. VLAN 10 could not communicate with the other VLANs. So now to be able to make those VLANs communicate with each other, the different VLANs to communicate each other, we have to perform inter-VLAN routing. Now, to, this is VLAN 10. Previously, it could communicate with only VLAN 10. VLAN 20 could only communicate with VLAN 20. VLAN 30 could only communicate with VLAN 30. These two were not able to communicate with each other. So let me see a packet tracer here. I'm going to show you. We have this here. VLAN 10 here and VLAN 20 here. They cannot communicate e with each other. But VLAN 10 can communicate here with VLAN 10. It's successful. VLAN 20 can communicate with VLAN 20. So it's successful. But the, the other VLAN cannot communicate, they cannot communicate with each other. So that's what exactly what I mean. Now, there are three ways to configure inter VLAN routing. There is one legacy inter VLAN routing, then router on a stick, then we have layer free switch using switch virtual interfaces. Now, legacy inter VLAN routing. What happens in legacy inter VLAN routing? It's as simple. In on our router, for each VLAN, we will need to have a separate physical interface. Now, as we know, we cannot have many physical interfaces on a router. So for this reason, it has been replaced by router on a stick. Routing on a stick inter VLAN routing overcomes the limitation of the legacy inter VLAN routing method. But here, what we use, we use sub interfaces. So the router Ethernet interface would be con configured with 802.1Q trunk, and this would connect to a to the layer two switch. So sub-interfaces is what? It's software. It's, a, it's software on a router. It's going to take that one interface. Let us say on our router we have gigabit 0 slash 0. This interface will be divided into several. Like it, there would be dot 10 for VLAN uh, 10, dot 20 for VLAN 30, etc. So each VLAN tag traffic enters the router interface forwarded to that VLAN sub-interface. After a routing decision is made based on the destination IP network address, a router then determines the exit interface for that tra traffic. Now, what are sub-interfaces? Sub-interfaces, as I told you, they are software-based virtual interfaces. So each sub-interface is independently configured with an IP address and VLAN assignment. So let's see how we're going to do it. This is a router on a stick. We have all this was okay to work with VLAN 10, VLAN 20, blah, blah, blah. To make the different VLANs to work, we have to connect a router. So let's go on in our packet tracer to see how we have to do it. Now here, I'll take a router here. I'm going to put a router here. Now. We're going to connect the straight through cable. Today is this first. Straight through cable. I'm going to put it on my gigabit 01 here. And here I'm going to put it on gigabit 00. We're going to configure the router sub interfaces first. So I click on this. Now it's a no here. Now interface gigabit 00. I have to configure for VLAN 10. So it's dot 10. So to configure a sub interface, we have to put encapsulation dot 1Q10. So here dot 10, why? Because it represents VLAN 10. Here again, it's because we are configuring for, to, for it to work for VLAN 10. That's why I put 10 here. If I have put 20 here, it would be 20 here. If I put 30 here, it would be 30 here. Now, IP address. 172.17.10.255.255.255.0. For the 
the one who has the sub interface which has to work with VLAN 20, it's end gigabit 00 dot 20. Again, we're going to put encapsulation dot 1Q. This time it will be 20. And I'm going to put the IP address here. It will be 20.1. Then I have interface gigabit 00 dot 30. Again, encapsulation dot 1Q 30. Then we have IP address, which changes here to 30.1. Interface gigabit 0, 0, dot 0.99. It would be for the native VLAN, which we, which we configured in our previous, previous session, to VLAN 99, native, working with native. So here also for native VLAN as well, we put 99.1. Oops, we forgot to put encapsulation.1q. So that's why we got this issue, dot one q 99 Then we have to put the IP address. So you see, if you don't put encap.1q, we will, we will not be able to configure the sub-interface with an IP address. Now, interface gigabit 00. Now I'm going to bring that interface up, that link so no shut. So that's how we configure the InterVLAN routing for a router on a stick. Here now we have this one we have to configure as trunk. Interface gigabit 01, switchboard mode trunk. And that's it. That's all we have to do for on this switch. All right, memory. To save a configuration, and I'll type write memory. Write memory. Good. So also what you have to note here that in this PC here, so the, uh, the, I have put gateway 172.17.10.1. That's why 10.1 is configured on this sub-interface. Here it is 21. So that's why 20.1 is configured on this sub-interface. Now let's continue. Next, we have layer free switch using SVI. Modern enterprise networks rarely use router in a stick because it does not scale easily to meet requirements. So, in these very large networks, network administrators would use layer free switches to configure inter VLAN routing. So, however, a large enterprise requires a faster, much more scalable method. Now, how are we going to do this? So, I'm going to do one from scratch. Here, we'll take a two workstation. So this is one workstation, but another workstation. We're going to configure the workstation, the first one as a VLAN 10. Good. So I've configured them with a gateway 21 for the VLAN 10, 10.1. Now we're going to add a layer free switch, so a multi layer switch. So here we have switch here. We're going to, we're going to select this multi layer switch. All right, so here now.
So I put a straight through cable. Gigabit 01, where VLAN 10 will be working on. And here we're going to put uh, Gigabit 02 for VLAN 20 to work on. Now let's configure the switch. CLI. No. So now we're going to create the VLAN. We have VLAN 10 name faculty. VLAN 20 name student. Now we're going to configure On this VLAN, we're going to say switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10, because here VLAN 10 will be working on. Then interface gigabit 02. Switch port access mode access. Switch port access VLAN 20. Now we've configured VLAN 10, we've configured VLAN 20. Now we have to configure on the interface uh, IP routing on this switch. We, sh we should enable out IP routing on the switch so that it's going to work perfectly. So first, let's see what we have done. We created the VLAN on the switch. SBI VLAN interfaces, the access port. And then we've enabled IP routing. And now you see the show VLAN re show interface switch port. In case we have inter VLAN issues, missing VLAN, we go and show VLAN re to check which VLANs are missing. Switch port issues. Maybe we've missed the interface. We've put another VLAN on that interface, or we didn't configure the trunk. We haven't allowed the VLAN on the trunk, etc. Thank you.